Hey YouTube, my name is Ken. Once again, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, video tutorial for RPG Maker 2003, how to make your very first video game. Um, last time we covered panoramas, uh, we created this map right here. And just a quick example to give you guys an idea of how panoramas work. Uh, this time I took the liberty to create a more thought out uh, sort of version of this uh, kind of map using uh, my graphics pack 2 which is now available in my blog lotussoftware.blogspot.com so I have the environment graphics pack 2 that I just put up today um, here you can see a couple of Japanese style themed uh, houses a little shrine here um, some other aesthetic uh, type objects couple of walls, couple of logs and rocks, and then I also have a inner stone house which I took the liberty of creating a map with in Photoshop. So this is here you can see the finished product. Um, I spent literally I think it was one or two hours making this and making the full uh, version of this map in our RPG Maker engine. And here you can see on the second window the inner uh, inner house that I created as a panorama. Um, the dimensions of this image being 640 by 480 because 320 by 240 just wasn't large enough to sort of uh, encapsulate all of this. Um, anyways, I'm going to start off this tutorial by, uh, well first of all I'm going to tell you guys what we're going to do now. Um, so last time we created the, the basic panorama, today we're going to create a more advanced panorama that allows the um, hero to sort of collide with objects better um, and this right here is a finished product so I'm going to go ahead and play it just to give you guys an idea of what it might look like. Alright so you can see um, the hero can actually walk behind a lot of these objects. Um, Usually it runs a lot smoother than this. I think it's lagging a bit because um, I'm recording the screen. But uh, here you can see that the hero is um, half transparent in the water. The water is moving. The clouds are rolling by. Uh, rain. I have some tint effects going on. Here's our save portal from last time. This time it's uh, I, I guess uh, it looks kind of like a carrot now. But so I changed the color of that. Uh, if I go to the shrine here and I press enter, a little battle animation pops up and HP MP restored comes up. And then I can also go inside of these houses using that uh, inner stone house panorama and interact with this guy. So it kind of mixes in that panorama that I offer on my blog with some RTP graphics overlaid on top of it. So that's one way of doing it. Um, if I go to this house over here, there's another guy and I can talk to him as well. And kind of the same deal. So this is a far more in-depth complex panorama than the one we created in our last video tutorial. As you can probably see, um, like I said, it only took me an hour or two of work compared to like 10 minutes uh, for creating this panorama right here. Um, so it's a bit more work, but well worth the effort, I would say. All right, so if you saw my last video tutorial covering the panoramas, you already know um, how I sort of set these up. Um, so I won't go over it in too much detail, but I will just give you a um, basic coverage of what needs to be said um, in regards to the collision for this uh, kind of panorama for this map that we created or that, um, yeah, that we created. Okay, so first of all, if you can see on the layers tab here in Photoshop, I have an overlay group, I have a trees group, and I have a ground terrain group. To create groups, you simply hit this button right here. It says create a new group. 
And when I do that, um, you can see group one has been created. If I double click, I can rename the group to whatever I want. And basically what I would do is drag whichever layer. So I can either drag a layers one at a time into this group simply by hovering over it and letting go of the mask button. Or I can click on a layer, click control to select multiple layers. Or if I want all of these uh, layers, six, four, two, nine, and 25, I can just hit the layer six and then while holding shift, hit layer 25 and it will select all of those and then I can the same way drag into group one and what grouping does is if you see um, right now everything's visible but if I um, click on this arrow the group folder collapses now um, everything in this group folder all of these layers um, sort of move as one and uh, can be turned on and off in terms of visibility so like right here if I hit that, everything in, in group one will be turned off. If I hit the eye again, everything in group one will be turned back on or become visible. If I select my marquee uh, tool here and try to move this image, um, everything in group one will move together. So that's, um, I'm gonna control Z all of that. Okay, so now group one is gone. Um, so that's sort of ideal for creating panoramas like this because um, it gives you a better grasp of things so for the overlay example for example uh, if I hit the visible icon or the eye everything that disappeared is basically um, what the hero will be walking under so you can see now how a creating group for say the overlay is really important. Um, everything visible right now, the hero will collide with and will be enabled to uh, pass through everything um, under the overlay group. So everything that you see now, the hero should be able to walk under. And the, this is essential. Um, what I did was under ground terrain, my group ground terrain, I have another group called water. Water contains a series of images, which are, um, you know, PNG images of water, um, but they differ uh, from it, from image to image. So if I go through, you can see that the water image here is changing. If I turn the invisibility off for each of these layers, you can see that the water changes. And this is essentially how you create a, a sort of animated water effect. Um, you would save this image minus the overlay. You would save this image as it looks now. So I would go to file or image mode index color because remember RPG Maker 2003 requires it to be indexed. And I would save this image as uh, I saved it as RPG Maker Tutorial 5 Panorama Example A. So I would save it as that. And then I would hit Control, Alt, and Z to undo that. And then I would get rid of one of these layers, the visibility of one of these layers, go back to image, mode, index, and then control shift S to save. And then I would save it as panorama B. And then I would do that for the next two layers to create a panorama example C file, panorama example D file. And when we merge all of these images together, we create that water effect that you saw earlier on. Uh, so I'm gonna hit control alt and Z. And another thing you want to do, so for the overlay group here, right under that I have this uh, layer which is um, blacked out. This way, when I hit image mode index color and hit OK, and hit OK, and then hit Control Shift and S to save it, I can save it um, as, I saved it as RPG Maker Tutorial 5, Panorama Example 2, you can name it whatever you want but this would essentially be the overlay image, which is how you do that um, effect where the hero walks under uh, this image rather than colliding with it or walking over it. Um, so that's basically how you do it. Um, so if I go back here and go to my map, panel map final tutorial, uh, and I zoom out and we'll go to the upper tile layer, you can see that the trees are not displayed 
but uh, if I click, I believe it's this one right here, if I click on this event, um, there's an event in your event command under page 2 called show picture, which is what this event line is right here, show picture. So if I hit spacebar there, and under image file, if I double click that, you can see our trees and our walls and the roof over here for the shrine, everything the hero um, is supposed to go under. So I realize I'm being a bit redundant and um, being very specific in uh, describing this, but it's essential to understand if you wish to create your own panoramas, if you want to, you know, go to my blog and get these images right here. Um, if I, double, if I click on that, you can see the full size of the image and all uh, of the details. Um, if you want to get these images and then apply those images to you know, Photoshop and create your own map, um, you want to create an overlay group and have um, you know, just these images saved as a picture, as a .png file, so that when you apply to your map as a, in, in the event command, um, so that the hero can go under. Uh, it's essential to understand this. So, um, moving on, let's go back to RPG Maker 2003, our engine, and I already created it. I already gave you guys a run through of this map, but I'm going to create it once again for you guys to see how I did um, everything that I did. So I'm going to hit the folder directory, right click, new map, we're going to name this Pano Map Final 2. Okay, also, um, this is going to be, in terms of dimensions, 40 by 30. If you watch my, it was one of the earlier video tutorials, I explained why you need the dimensions that you uh, require. Um, so this is, 40 by 30 is the same as a 640 by 480 uh, pixel image. So I'm going to use a parallax background and I'm going to select this image right here, uh, Panorama A. And now you can see it appears. Um, if you have a image that's 640 by 480 or under, you can import it right here under Panorama. You can import it like this. And so this is the image I'm using right now for my map. So if I import it, everything will be fine. However, um, if I change this image to anything greater than 640 by 480, and if I were to try to import it uh, in this manner, it would give me an error saying that the image file is, uh, or the image dimensions are too large, and it won't let me do that. So in that case, what I have to do is from Photoshop, I would have to, you know, image mode, index, blah, blah, blah. And then when, when saving it, so save as, I would actually have to open up, instead of saving it in a random folder, I would actually have to open up my RPG uh, Maker, ga my uh, game directory, go to the Panorama folder and save it there. That way, when you open up RPG Maker and try to set a panorama here that's larger than 640 by 480, it will actually allow you to do that. So that's one way of getting around it. Um, if I have an example down the road with a tutorial where it is, uh, you know, say 1280 by 960 or whatever, um, I will show you guys um, exactly how to do that again. Right now I don't have an image like that available, so I'm just going to continue on. Alright, so we've imported our image here. Um, <laughs> If I try to, I, I place this uh, hero right there. If I try to play right now, you will see exactly what you see in the map editor. The water isn't moving. In fact, the hero seems to be walking over the water. If you remember in the beginning when I walked over the water, the hero's bottom half was transparent. Um, the trees aren't here. None of the overlays are displaying. Um, so this is what it would look like. If I want to create um, the overlay image, if I want to set that, I would have to left uh, click on the one of the tiles, uh, left click again in this uh, event command window, and then I would go to show picture. Um, usually, if you 
are creating a game and you're creating an overlay uh, picture, you're going to want to change the picture number to, it can be anywhere from, anywhere from 1 to 50. So you're usually going to want to maybe have it, you know, a bit higher. Um, because the way that picture numbers work is, so if I have an image 1 or picture number 1, a picture number 5 will appear over picture number 1, and a picture number 50 will appear over everything else, including picture numbers 5 and 1. So if you have multiple images going on, um, say you have multiple images for the overlay, you usually don't want your overlay images to be 1, because then every other image that you display will be um, basically covering your, so in this case, covering this image. So what I like to do for overlay images, I like to have it set to above 10, so in this case I'm going to have it uh, set to 11. If we click on the image file, this is the image we created, so I'll click on that. And then you're going to want to, instead of setting it to specific coordinates, you're going to want to set it to a variable reference. And the reason is because if you set it to a specific coordinate, the overlay image, this right here, will appear all over your map. It's not going to appear consistently and it's just going to look really, really weird. So if I try to do that right now, I'll just show you guys. I'll change the trigger condition to parallel process and I'll add a wait command. So we'll wait 10 seconds or one second for now. <coughs> so if I try to play now, you can see the image just every second it changes depending on where the hero is. So if I wait, nothing's going to happen, but if I move, every second the image changes and it just looks really weird and it doesn't make any sense. That's where variables come in handy. So if I hit spacebar, uh, I'm going to go to variable reference and I can delete these two variables for now because that, those are the variables I used for my first map. Um, We'll go over here and we'll name it Pano over lay x for x coordinate and then I'll copy that, paste it here and Pano over lay y for the y coordinate. So x is going to be x, y is going to be y, okay, apply. Um, I'm going to click uh, right on top of that and go to the first page and go to variable operations. We're going to go to uh, single variable x and what I'm going to do over um, operand we're going to go to uh, the sprite this event is what you want and then you want screen relative to x so panel over overlay x is going to be this event's screen relative to x you don't want x coordinate you don't want y coordinate because that x and y coordinates, uh, these two options usually work with tiles. Uh, relative Y and relative X usually work with uh, dimensions or pixels. And since this image is a, uh, you know, it has dimension, it has pixels, these are the options we want to use. So panel overlay X is not subtract, you don't want to do that, it's set equal to uh, this event screen X and then panel overlay Y is set to this event screen relative to Y. So um, well, let's see I just want to make sure that I have it set similarly here and what it do. Okay. Um,